looks like we're live. Give a few seconds here just for folks to see it and join us. And make sure that we are showing up here. Looks like we are. So I'll go ahead and kick us off. Looks like we got a few people joining us. A few more will join, but good evening. I'm Ben Gilmore running for State Senate. I'm joined this evening by my good friend Howard Beatty. Howard, thanks so much for being part of this and for joining us tonight. Uh, we just wanted to come to you uh, briefly uh, for about 30 minutes or so and just kind of talk about the campaign, what it's about, why we're doing this, and some of the issues that are important that we've heard over the course of the campaign. Uh, as I've been out for almost two years, and Howard, you've been running for a good part of that too. So I, I think uh, we're all we're all pretty tired at this point, but we're really excited uh, for what God has in store. Uh, and I feel like that uh, this campaign was something that God told me to do, and uh, I know that for a fact. I put a lot of prayer into it, um, so I know that that he's he's in control of the outcome, regardless. But I'm really excited to see what he's going to do, Howard. Well, I, I want to thank you for joining tonight. I, I want to give a special thanks to Ben for handling the technology and, and taking care of all this tonight, not one of my fortes, and I do appreciate that. Absolutely. And look forward to the questions and, and just having them spend a little time with you, uh, the public, and addressing your concerns and questions. Great. So we've, uh, we've been running some Facebook posts out there of, uh, some questions that have been posed, and we're going to get to some of those tonight. Uh, we may have time to get to a few uh, as you leave them there uh, on the Facebook Live. But um, you know, one of the one of the questions I think we get asked a lot, and this will kind of segue into some of the other questions we have, Howard. But um, I was at, I get asked this a lot: uh, Why are you running? And what do you think that you can do? Uh, to rep how do you think you can represent Southeast Arkansas? What are the, some of the things that you want to, to work on if elected? And so I'll tackle this one first and I'll kick it over to you. And um, so again, I go back to what God told me to do and that's to run. Um, and one of the reasons for that is we need a conservative voice in Southeast Arkansas. Uh, we've not had one. And uh, some of those conservative values that have been lacking um, in Little Rock. We need folks who are bold, who are going to bring some of those uh, issues to the forefront. Uh, and some of, the, some of the issues that are important is, is standing for life. Um, being 100% pro-life is, is what I am and what I'm about. Also defending uh, the Second Amendment, uh, but also to be a strong voice um, for Southeast Arkansas. And I think that uh, we've, not, we've not had that. A couple of reasons for that is, um, you know, we've been represented by folks who are lacking in, in uh, some of the policy decisions that are being made. So uh, that's kind of my, my brief uh, answer to that. Howard, you want to take it? Well, I, I echo a lot of what Ben said. Uh, I think the, the first reason uh, that we're running is just so the folks in, in, in Southeast Arkansas can have a choice. Uh, in the past, uh, these seats have been primarily controlled and held by Democrats and folks that don't share the values uh, that we hold dear here in South Arkansas. I think their voting record, they're good people. Uh, I, they, they're citizens in the community, but their voting record in Little Rock is not reflected of the values that we have here in South Arkansas. So my, my main reason for running is to give you a choice. Uh, since I've been here uh, in, in South Arkansas, we, we haven't had a choice. So you have a conservative Republican choice this time. So I'd appreciate your prayers and your vote. Yeah, great. So let's, uh, maybe let's get some of the questions. I see we have a few more people uh, joining us. Um, one of the questions that, that we got um, earlier was, how do we how do we feel about the Second Amendment? I know we both kind of talked about that briefly in our opening remarks, but uh, how how do we feel about that? What is our stance on restrictions of the Second Amendment? Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and tackle that one too. Uh, first of all, Second Amendment uh, is in our Constitution, and it says 
uh, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I believe that. Uh, and, and what we're seeing nationally is playing out in Little Rock. There are restrictions trying to be forced on uh, our gun rights, uh, on, on citizens who want to keep and bear arms to defend themselves. Um, and so we need conservatives at the table who can push back on some of that legislation. Well, I, I agree. I, the Second Amendment is something that's not debatable, and uh, I'm a strong Second Amendment advocate. And, and it's not anything that, that we should take lightly. Uh, our opponent, uh, my opponent, uh, her stance on concealed carry rights, uh, reducing uh, voting against the reduced carry, um, concealed carry fees, uh, voting present on a uh, bill that restricted gun rights. Those are things that I would never do. Uh, other things, committee, during committee, discussing restraint holsters and wanting to waste taxpayer money on a study uh, on a restraint holster and third-party verification outside of what we have. So any legislation that would come up that would restrict or infringe on our rights to bear arms, I would be against. And, and I, I appreciate you you bringing that up because uh, one of the things I think we should point out is we both received the NRA endorsement. Uh, our opponents have not. Uh, my opponent uh, received a C rating, um, which is not good, folks. Um, and what did your opponent get? She got a D rating, which is just a little below that um, C rating. It's hard to do. Yeah, especially I, I would think here in Southeast Arkansas, uh, we're, we all love to get outdoors. We love hunting, but beyond that, it's about being able to defend ourselves. Uh, and that specifically goes to one of the questions we got: is uh, do do we believe in the right of someone to defend themselves? And I, I would say certainly, absolutely, oh, yes. most most definitely. And and the other side, my opponent says that that I received that rating just from filling out a questionnaire. Well, yes, I did fill out that questionnaire, but I answered those questions honestly and from the heart and how I believe, and I'll stand by every one of those. And, you know, failure to answer that questionnaire is not what got her her uh, rating by the NRA. It was her votes, and you can check those out on the Arkansas Lead site. Yeah, and, and, and I'll say this, too, when it comes to um, here in Arkansas, uh, I believe we are a constitutional carry state. Uh, I think the... The Attorney General uh, even has stated that. Uh, the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, folks like that have, have also backed that up as well. So, again, we need to protect the Second Amendment. It's important. It's not just there. Uh, it's, it's not one of these you can check the ones you like and skip. It's kind of not a buffet option. And so uh, we need to make sure that we're defending that. A um, couple other questions here. Um, talking about the Supreme Court. Um, Someone asked, uh, what were our views on the nomination for Supreme Court? Since I went first with the guns, um, happy to let you you go first on that one, Howard, if you want to tackle that, or I can, whichever. Well, I, I'll just say that I look forward to um, Judge Barrett uh, being confirmed as Justice Barrett, and, and I think it'll be a great addition to the Supreme Court. Absolutely. Uh, and I, and I'll, I'll agree with that. I, I, one thing I'll say is I really appreciate President Trump um, putting out a list of justices, people we know are conservative, everybody's had time to look at and to vet, uh, and he put that out unprecedented, I think, uh, for, for presidents doing that. Uh, so I think that that really speaks to what he's trying to do in putting forth conservatives. The other thing I'm going to point out, and you'll probably agree with this, I just hope that they, the Democrat Party does not do to her what they did to Brett Kavanaugh. Oh. I mean, I echo those comments. It was a disgrace uh, and beneath the um, the status of the U.S. Senate for what they did there. Yeah, I, I agree. And so I think we're better than that. And I, I, think, uh, I think the Senate is ready to confirm. Uh, I think the, uh, first of all, I'll say this, the president's constitutional authorities don't go away just because we're in an election year. Exactly. So anyway, moving on here. Um, uh, one of the questions was uh, around COVID. Um, COVID-19 is something we're all very familiar with. Um, we've been impacted by it. Um, we've changed our day-to-day -day life because of it. And, and certainly, let's, 
not forget the many people who've lost their lives or uh, become very ill because of that. And so we, can, we need to continue to be cautious. We need to continue to heed the guidance um, that is being put forth by our health officials. Um, I think the governor and, and uh, Republican leadership in our state has been very prudent in acting. Um, and one of the questions that we got was, do we support the mandatory mask requirement? Um, so I'm going to say, look, wearing a mask in certain settings, I think is very important. I think it's, it's a very small thing we can do to protect ourselves and to protect, uh, the more vulnerable around us. But I also believe in personal liberty. I also believe in, in people and common sense and people being able to decide when that's needed and when that's not. And I think Arkansas has done a very good job of that. I, by and large, I think we've heeded the, the guidance. Uh, we've heeded uh, the mandates. Um, so, Howard, thoughts on that? Well, I, you know, the mass side, whether you agree or disagree, uh, you know, it, it's a courtesy to those that uh, are, are full supporters of the mask. I, I'm not a full supporter of the mandated mask, uh, but as far as businesses, it's the rules that they have to operate by. And so I carry a mask with me, uh, have one here with me tonight. Uh, and I try to be respectful of those that I'm around and I'll encounter. And if, if it makes that situation more comfortable to carry on a conversation uh, and makes the people I'm around comfortable, then I'll wear the mask. Um, and, and I think it's just, uh, it's just being prudent and using good common sense based on the environment and the individuals you're around. Absolutely. Thanks for that. Moving on, and, and again, um, we're going to try to get to a few of the, the questions uh, that you're leaving. Again, some of these were submitted uh, on some of our Facebook posts um, ahead of this. So I uh, just want you to know this is where some of these questions are coming from. They're coming from off our Facebook page. Um, and we felt it was important to come to you live and to have this discussion live. Um, so again, if you, if you have a question, if we have the time, we're going to try to get to it. We're going to make every effort to do that. Uh, but do you, do you have a question there, Howard? Well, we, we kind of went over this. One of the questions that we received is, how will you both protect the unborn in Arkansas? That's a great question. So uh, I'll start 100% pro-life, and what I'll do is I'll be against any proposed legislation that infringes on that, and I, and I will stand solid uh, for pro-life, and you won't find a vote for me voting to use public funds for abortions. You won't find me voting against uh, Human Life Protection Act. The life of the unborn is one of the most important reasons why I'm standing here today as a candidate. And I pledge to you that I will do everything that I can from a legislative standpoint and as a Christian to make certain that those legislative acts are defeated. That's a great response, uh, just to echo that. Scripture tells us that uh, God knit us together in the womb. And, and, and it goes on and says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, man, that's, that's strong when you think about that. Uh, and you think about the, the value that we should have on life. And just to echo what Howard said, uh, I'm going to do whatever I can do to defend life. If there's measures brought forth that devalues that life, then I'm going to vote against them, and I'm going to be opposed to that. And then I'm also going to look for ways that we can continue to move forward to stop these uh, senseless acts and killing the, the innocent unborn. Um, my opponent, I don't think, feels the same way. And I, I say I don't think. I know he doesn't feel the same way uh, because when he had the chance, he voted against life. Uh, he did that with the 20-week uh, ban. He did that with the heartbeat bill. Um, and so that, that to me is... Again, one of the reasons why I'm running, because I don't want someone up there uh, voting that way when the majority of the people in Southeast Arkansas, in this district, I don't believe share those values. And I've heard that repeatedly and, and over and over through the course of this campaign. I, I know while we've been knocking doors and visiting with potential voters, that's one of the first questions they ask is where do you stand on abortion? And you know, both of our opponents have tried to justify their votes in this area to say that the legislation that they voted against or voted for was, was unconstitutional. Well, 
it's not my job to decide if that's constitutional or not. I'm going to vote with the biblical principles and with my Christian faith. I'm going to leave that up to the judicial side to make those decisions. But I'm going to vote against those bills that would improve or, or allow abortion in this state. Yeah, I, to just second that, I know I know some will say that you know we we need to be pro-life on not just the unborn, but as we move forward, and that's true. We should always value life, um, and we should err on the side of life. I've said that repeatedly throughout this campaign, and so um, I, I think we have to just continue to strengthen pro-life measures, whether that's the unborn or whether that's uh, you know end of life. We have to we have to strengthen. Uh, pro-life measures in the state and continue to move forward on that issue. What else do we have there, Howard? Uh, let's see. We have one. Uh, what can be done about the deteriorating infrastructure and roads? That's a great question. and I, That's something that's come up quite a bit. Um, look, we all understand, Howard, as someone who's been in economic development as long as you have, I've been a part of working on some of the projects with you and local economic development here across it. We all understand that good roads and highways and infrastructure is vital to economic development and recruiting business uh, to this portion of the state. Um, and so we have to continue to do that. Yeah, if elected, that's something that I'll do. I'll put first and foremost on the agenda is looking for ways to continue to steer tax dollars to highways and infrastructure, but doing it without trying to raise a tax because uh, something that's come up over and over is uh, we are taxed enough as it is already. Uh, I think that state government can, can find ways to spend taxpayer dollars better. Uh, and so I think that, that we can continue to find savings in state government, redirect some of that uh, to, our, to, to have more stable funding for our roads and infrastructure. But again, going back to what we've already said, uh, being Republicans uh, and, and, and having a stronger voice for the folks in Little Rock have, knowing what legislation is being proposed, having uh, a seat at that table to be able to steer that uh, is, is going to be a big part of this. And so uh, your thoughts on that, Howard? Well, as, as you said, the roads and the highway system, uh, key drivers for economic development. Uh, you know, we, without those, those, um, those highways, uh, the manufacture of goods and the movement of goods and, and supply and raw material in and out of Southeast Arkansas would, would be virtually impossible. So what we have to do is we have to work with, uh, with the state, uh, work with the counties and the cities to make certain we best utilize those funds that we have. Uh, there are key projects in every corner of the state and you know we, we here in Crossit and, and in South Arkansas, uh, the 425 expansion uh, that was just opened here uh, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent things, but we need more of that in the state. Uh, and I, I echo your comment about, you know, we have problems in the state and it's real easy to say, oh, well, let's solve that problem with the tax. But I think we can be physically responsible and find those resources that, that are better used for our roads and, and uh, our counties and cities. And that's what I'll work for. I agree. Uh, if you look over the, the past several years, we've had record surpluses in state government, um, which is which brings us to uh, can we can we take a second and just talk about taxes uh, here for a second? Because it's know, a Sunday night, so if you want to talk about taxes, I guess we can. I think we should. It, it may change the whole <laughs> attitude of the discussion. Well, I, I'm going to say, and this is something that, that I think we've done a pretty good job of pointing out over the course of this campaign is just where our opponents stand on the issue of taxes. Um, and, you know, one of those that's been a big one that you've heard talk about is the cell phone tax. Uh, my opponent voted uh, for the, to increase the cell phone tax three different times. We're now the sixth highest in the nation when it comes to cell phone tax. And every time that he voted to do that, we had record surpluses in general revenue and state government. Now you could, you could say, well, why didn't we use some of those surplus funds to address the, 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 the needs that those taxes were trying to address? And, and, and I'll be very clear, those issues, 911 for instance, that's where that cell phone tax was going. We needed to upgrade our 911 system. I think we both agree that that's very important. Uh, when we need our first responders, uh, we call them, we need them, we want them there. 
And so that was very important. But again, it's moving past this mindset of let's solve every problem with a tax. I, I agree. And, and, and no greater uh, example than just the storm this, this past week and, and, you know, and the impact it had throughout uh, southeast Arkansas and throughout the country. 911 is important. And it's important that those systems were raised and, and improved. Uh, but again, there were other funds that were available without uh, burdening the, um, the taxpayers to pay for those. Um, so well, that, that's my only concern with the 911 and the tax is that, um, of the cell phone tax, there were other funds available for that. And to hold those for, because it's too easy. If you've got a little savings, mm, just raise a tax. Let's not use that money because we may need that later. Hmm. And I think we do that too often. Well, and, and look, again, I think we all understand that there are core functions of government too that, that do require money. And, and I think as good citizens, we want to, you know, pay taxes to support our, our law enforcement, our first responders and, and folks of that nature and, and, and things of that nature, whether it's roads or whatever. But at some point you can say, we might be taxed too much uh, and, and we need to work to lessen the overall tax burden on hardworking Arkansans in this state. And I think we constantly have to search out those areas where we can reduce tax and, and that's what I vow to do and I know that you support that as well. Absolutely. We got another, another question there I think. Um, well, I told y'all I wasn't real good here with the technology. <laughs> and even worse with the, these eyes I have of reading them. Uh, let's see, how would we protect our law enforcement from the defund the police movement? I think that's a simple question. That's a great question. I mean, primarily, I'll answer it. I, I'm not gonna vote in favor of any legislation that even remotely defunds the police. I know my opponent said uh, that based on the uh, concealed carry, and the, you know, her vote on the redu reduction of concealed carry that was gonna, what, cut 1.4 million from the state like police and absurdly said that I don't support the Arkansas State Police. I mean, how crazy is that? Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that she outright lied about it because there was $1.4 million. It did remove for 1.4 million from the state police budget, but there was an act ready to go, legislation prepared, that was gonna restore that 1.4 million back in. Now she attacked me for it, but she said on her videos and, and in public with Senator Cheatham, your opponent, who voted exactly the way I would vote. So those comments are just as well directed at, at Senator Cheatham to say that he doesn't support the state police. And I don't think any of us believe that. It was a crazy thing to say and just an attack. In an outright lie. Well, and I think you 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 are kind of going to a bigger issue anyway. If you look nationally at what we're seeing, Democrats, the liberal left, is pushing an agenda, and that agenda is chaos. That agenda is destroying the the fact, just destroying our laws, um, and and putting into jeopardy uh, folks like our law enforcement who protect us uh, every day. And so, this rhetoric is dangerous. Nobody wants to defend, to defund the police. We want to defend our law enforcement. And, and we, I think both of us are gonna be very strong advocates for that because we understand the importance of that, unlike many in the liberal left. Um, and, and, and something else I think that, that is really important to point out here, uh, when we saw the, the violent protests, uh, rioting that happened, um, you know, I think back to one evening um, just a few months ago uh, when we saw this, this the violence take place in Little Rock right here in Arkansas. And one of the things that I saw was the flags at our state capitol being burned on the steps. Yeah. And that, that's just a sad point to get to. Uh, but what makes it even worse is when you see folks who are encouraging that behavior, who are tweeting out about that, who are on Facebook recording that and sharing that and saying, let's keep that up. And of course, who I'm referring to is the Democrat Party of Arkansas. Yes. They made those, those statements, they made those posts. And that is dangerous rhetoric. It not only puts into jeopardy the lives of our law enforcement, but it tears a, a part of the fabric of this nation. It does. 
And, um, you know, that the, the fact we grew up in a time where you were taught to respect the police and cooperate and do what, what you could, and, and I still hold that respect, the highest respect for law enforcement and our first responders, those that put their lives in harm's way daily for all of us. And we in South Arkansas and throughout the state, we think the, the violence and, and the problems that we've seen nationally in some of these Democrat cities can't happen here. But you know, folks, it could happen here. If solid, conservative, hardworking South Arkansans don't stand up for the rights of our law enforcement and defend and protect uh, those public servants. So we have to do that. Absolutely. And, and, and look, just like anything else, just like any other job, you're going to have the occasional bad apple. But by and large, most of our first responders, our law enforcement, our teachers, our, our, our public servants <laughs> who serve us every day, uh, by and large, most of them are very, very good people, well-intentioned, just trying to do their job and, and to serve their community. So uh, another question here we, we had on the economy, and I know we've kind of talked about um, the economy in, in a couple of different ways, um, but uh, this one is uh, specifically geared toward COVID and, and some of the recovery efforts of coming out of COVID and getting our economy going. Um, I'll start with this one and kick it to you. Uh, so again, kind of going back through what we've experienced and some things I think we can learn from COVID. Uh, that it's taught us, uh, and, and I think some of the things that we're implementing, I know with our, our local hospitals and some of the practices they're implementing, the safe practices, um, you know, wearing the PPE, uh, but more importantly, having that ready, having supplies of that um, on site and ready at our local hospitals is important, and, and I know both of us are going to continue to support our local uh, hospitals uh, because it's important to keep health care right here at home. Um, you know, I think we all would rather go to the, the people just a mile away that we know instead of driving two to three hours away. Um, so that's important. So we've got to continue to support our, our local hospitals, our local providers here. Um, but kind of going back to the taxes, you know, one of the best ways to get an economy roaring is to lower taxes. Because what does that do? That, that causes businesses, businessmen and women, small business. I, I've heard this. We were just sitting down the other day with someone who was talking about small businesses and some of the, 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 the regulatory burden that they face and the taxes that they're dealing with. Uh, I know we got, a, we got a comment here talking about the LLC tax. Um, and so across the board, we have to look at ways to, to lower the overall tax burden. I know I've already said that once, but I think it's that important. Um, and so again, going back, how do we how do we get the economy up and up and roaring? Lower taxes, lessen the regulatory burden. Let hardworking uh, small business owners and hardworking Arkansans do what they do best, and, and that's and that's grow their business, reinvest in their business, and, and move forward. Your thoughts? Well, I, I agree with everything you said, and, and I would add in. Uh, the support of local economic development foundations and, and business leaders in the community to to seek new industry and job creation within within South Arkansas. We have to be focused on the out migration and the folks that are leaving South Arkansas, and we have to find a way to solve that. And we have to we have to create jobs so that that our our students and our children can come back home and have a place to work and be part of the community that that reared them. Um, and and I've, I've focused on that since I've been here in, in, in South yeah. Arkansas. It's been something that's been important to me and my, my role at economic development here in CrossFit. And, and I'll use those skills, both my banking skills uh, with small business men and women and the creation of, of jobs on the small business side. We have several new businesses in CrossFit uh, that with, with the assistance of the programs that we have available as bankers, uh, that are in operation right now because uh, we utilized those programs to put those folks in business. They were willing to step out and take a risk, and we found a way to mitigate that risk and assist them in, in opening their own business and creating jobs. And we need we need to do that throughout South Arkansas. Yeah, and you, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna point out something that uh, I think you should get a lot of credit for. 
uh, and, and Mike Smith and the rest of the team at Economic Development as well as other community partners here. But the, the, new, uh, the new addition was Synergy Cargo Trailers. Exciting news. Uh, had the governor down and, and other Congressman Westerman and other leaders from across the state here just uh, was that a few a couple of months ago um, with that with that new opening of, of synergy and that's what 70 new jobs and, and you get uh, I'm gonna say your your hard work on that has paid off and we appreciate that well you know that's something that not one a single individual can't take credit for uh, the ultimate credit for those jobs are the uh, uh, Vigler and Luis that decided that Cross at Arkansas and South Arkansas was the place to relocate their business and the rest of us the rest of us just helped facilitate that dream they have and through the uh, cooperation with the AEDC uh, Secretary Preston uh, the governor uh, some of our congressional delegation and the local people here in Cross it we were able to able to facilitate um, the opening of Synergy and the, the Economic Development Board, the city government, everyone worked together for the success of opening that facility. And that's what it takes is a spirit of cooperation and teamwork. And I, I promise that I'll be part of that team and I'll dedicate my time and resources to making many of those happen in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, that kind of goes back to um, things that we can do as elected officials things we've already been doing, you know, sitting down with, with industries coming to uh, our state and this part of our state, uh, you know, having those meetings, in, encouraging them, uh, you know, being advocates, if, if nothing else, being advocates for our region. Uh, and I think that's something we'll both continue to do if elected. Uh, we've gotten a, go ahead. I'm, I, I'm just going to say, I, I'm going to continue to do that even if I'm not elected. Absolutely. My life's not going to change. Creating jobs in South Arkansas is going to be a priority. For sure. Uh, we, we've gotten a couple of questions here. They're very good. I, I think we kind of spoke to this a second ago, um, but uh, Michael uh, posed one and then David also posed one. Um, do, do we believe that there's too much wasteful spending in state government? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think I a think simple about, yes suffices Well, here. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> laughing because I think just about any of us that uh, that we, we can stop and you know, it's all about choices It's about choices and sometimes we make good choices and sometimes we make bad choices um, And I, I definitely think that yes is the right answer to that question mm -hmm. uh, But I mean I I know in, in our personal lives there, there are times we make a choice and then we think back God why did I do that? And um, and I think we do that in state government too. Well, and I, I think this is uh, Where we can kind of move to transformation of state government uh, I think the governor gets a lot of credit uh, for uh, driving our state uh, to, you know, transform the way it, it works from a, uh, a very, <laughs> uh, I guess what I would say obsolete uh, system and, and working. And this is something that's going to take time. You, you don't do it overnight. It's like turning a big ship. It takes time to do that. Um, I know that um, something the lieutenant governor has always said, and I, I've had the privilege of working with the lieutenant governor, uh, but one of the things he's always says is state government taxes too much and spends too much. And it's not necessarily a taxing problem, it's more of a spending problem. And this goes back to your point of that restraint and knowing when, uh, you know, we, we need to maybe pull back a little bit and, and look at other ways and other things to redirect some of that, that spending. Uh, but yes, I think we can always find ways to reduce and then use those funds, redirect them to things that we believe are priorities. Maybe that be highways. Maybe that be infrastructure. Um, so yes, I, I think uh, we both agree <laughs> there is some wasteful spending in state government. Uh, I was looking here to see if we had uh, a few more questions. Um, I know we had one more here. Give me one second. Did you have something you wanted to? Well, go to? you know, I I, I want to address one issue. Uh, my opponent has posted, and I don't know if it's a mail piece or not, some things that Howard Beatty is unfit for office. And she brought up uh, some past uh, regulatory issues that I've had as a banker. And, you know, that, I, I, I just want to say that that's one of the reasons uh, that I decided to become politically active. As I went through that, uh, that situation, 
It was an, uh, I would say that an Obama era policy uh, that was passed down. Uh, and, you know, um, that happened back in 010 uh, and 12. Uh, and then I think January 3rd of 2012, there was a consent order issued against the bank. And then I, I think also it's worthy to point out that February 27th of 2013, that that thing was terminated. It was 23 pages long. No, yeah, 22 pages long. And it had 23 provisions on there. And all of those provisions were corrected and taken care of, not by hiring outside consultants, but by the work of the president and CEO and the staff that I had at the bank. We addressed all of those concerns and that order was lifted in 13 months. Uh, the, the other thing in the mailer said that I was charged again in 2016. Well, take the time to read if you're gonna throw an attack piece out there and a smear piece. The, the, the things in the 2016 consent directly related back to the um, 2012 consent order. And you know, as president and CEO of an organization and being the head of an organization, I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I took responsibility for the failures and, and, and the errors that, that the FDIC found. I worked and I corrected those and I protected my bank, my shareholders, and my customers. And it was all technical issues with timely filing of reports. And I say that again, technical issues and a very subjective area of FDIC rules and regs. And we addressed that and took care of it. And when I decided to run, I knew full well that at some point that was gonna come out. So if folks have questions or concerns, I'm open and I'll discuss those to the level that, I'm about, uh, that I can and try to address those. But to state that I'm an unfit, uh, unfit to serve or not a good businessman, well, just look, you know, and I never said look at my record, but I'll say look at my record right now. Because even after all those things that she pointed out there, I remain president and CEO of the bank. And in April, uh, March 31st of this year, April 1st, negotiated and closed on a sale of First State Bank. And, and that sale was an excellent, excellent return for my shareholders. It protected all of my employees. They have jobs. No one lost their job. And a bank, a community bank that shared the values and principles that my former bank had moved in to do business in Southeast Arkansas and take care of the residents and the citizens and the customers that I had worked all these years to take care of. So take your attack at me and take just a few minutes for this little distraction because that's what it is, is a distraction from what I've sent out directing you to look at the votes of my opponent. I haven't attacked her personally. I have simply identified votes that I disagree with. She said, I've lied. I just challenge her, point out one lie in any of those votes and I'll gladly retract it and take a, make a statement that it was a lie and it was inaccurate but there are none there. So continue to read those mail pieces, look at those votes, and know who you're dealing with, and someone that can explain a situation, and someone that tries to deflect and run away from their record. And that's, I'll leave it at that. Well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add on that a little bit. Look, over the course of the campaign, um, what we've done is we've, we've contrast. We've told uh, what our opponents have done, how they voted, not attacking them personally. We've attacked their record. You know what? They should be held accountable for their record. When they're voting for abortion, when they're voting to raise taxes, when they're voting against Second Amendment, uh, protecting the Second Amendment, when they're, when, when they're voting uh, contrary to the beliefs and the value systems of voters right here in Southeast Arkansas, that's their record. That's why they're trying to distract uh, with, with attacks that, that they've done, because they don't want you to know their record. Uh, and, and I'm going to use my opponent's words against him. <laughs> August 22nd, 2019, Democrat Gazette article that was written about this race. I encourage you to go look it up. My opponent said, my fear is, when he was asked about this race and about me running against him, my fear is they'll look at my record and they'll find something to talk about.
Well, we have. We found a lot of things to talk about. Things that voters right here in Southeast Arkansas didn't even know. And they're surprised and they're shocked. I've gotten the phone calls. I had someone message me last night and they said, I've been looking at his record. I cannot believe that's the way he's voted. You have my support. Because it's contrary to the beliefs of you, the voter, right here in Southeast Arkansas. They know it. And now many of y'all know what their record is. And that's what the goal of this campaign was. I sat down with the senator before I announced, and I said, I told him what I was going to do, that I was going to run. We had a great conversation. And, and I, one of the things that I told him, I said, this campaign is not going to be about you and I. It's going to be about the issues. And if I don't contrast, I have no business running because I'm going to tell people what I'm going to do, and I'm going to talk about what you've done. And that's just the way it works. It's about pointing out and identifying where we disagree. Now, there's many things. You said this the other night at a, de at a debate in uh, Monticello. There's many things that we can agree on. Many things. But, but <laughs> if we just talk about those, then how are we different? Exactly. And, you know, I, I want to say that I, none of the, the mail pieces I've considered a personal attack on my opponent. And I, I also want to say that with my faith, uh, my mornings begin with prayer. And my opponent and, and Ben's opponent, they're included in those prayers. And, uh, and I take that very seriously. And I ask for each of you that, that, that hear this tonight, do the same. Pray for all of us that are involved in campaigns and are working to serve you. Uh, I, that's the most important. I had a gentleman tonight uh, that, that basically told me that you know, he, he wasn't going to vote either way. In, in the race for state rep. And, you know, I, I came back to him and said, look, I can respect your decision, but I'm going to ask for the most important thing other than your vote. And the vote's not the most important. It's the prayers uh, of the voters in South Arkansas. So I ask you to do that. When, when, you, when you utter those prayers, uh, in, include all of us in those. Very well said. Um, I, I know we, we need to wrap up. We've been going, I think, longer than 30 minutes. Uh, this has been fun. I've enjoyed it. Uh, I've enjoyed talking about the issues that, that we've heard from, whether it's door-to-door -door or people just reaching out on social media or emailing or calling. I've gotten a ton of phone calls from people. Um, uh, you know, So I, I think this was important for everybody to hear just straight from us where we are on these issues. We've talked about uh, some of the ballot initiatives, highway tax, we've talked about a lot of these different, the highway funding and, 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 and lower taxes and all these things. Um, so if you're just now joining, uh, I would encourage you to go back and, and watch this video after it's posted. Um, and, 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 you know, feel free to, to message us. My cell phone number's on uh, my Facebook page. I believe yours is Mine's as well. there as well. Um, and, and then everything we've sent out over the course of this campaign has our cell phone number at the bottom. So uh, more than happy to engage with you and talk about these issues and things that are important uh, for uh, everyone down here. Uh, we did have a question here, and I think it's going to be the last question, but I wanted to bring it up because I think it's important. Uh, David asked, what are our views on the First Amendment? There are many threats to freedom uh, of speech and the right to worship in America right now. What are our thoughts? Howard, do you want to tackle that one first? Well, I, I, I appreciate that question. And, you know, I, I guess my view on, on, on the First Amendment uh, and, and freedom of religion, uh, I, I'm going to be against anything that's going to infringe on that First Amendment right or infringe on South Arkansans or, or anyone's ability, ability to choose how they worship. Um, so that would be my stance. Yeah, it's a great response. I, I'm going to just tag on to that and say and it's not just about my views or, or your views. No. That, that's the beauty of our nation as it was founded. Uh, I think the founders, uh, with a lot of providential help from, from God uh, steering them, crafted something uh, as beautiful as the Constitution that, that protects and guards against uh, those willing to infringe on our rights. Um, right to worship is so important. We're seeing these attacks nationally. Um, <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna like this because I think you know where you're going where I'm going. Uh, you know, as Republicans uh, in our platform, the very first thing 
is God. Exactly. The very first thing. And if you read the Democrat platform, which I encourage you to do, you'll probably find it as disturbing as I did. Um, but there's, there's lots of things that, you know, as <laughs> talking about life and, 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 and being pro-abortion and, and things of that nature that are just uh, mind-boggling to me. But one of the things that you won't find is God. Yeah. 18, I think it's 18 pages long. And, you know, I, I can't say that I'm the wiser for reading it, but I, I, I mean, I, I do say take just a few minutes and, and look at that, and, yeah. and you won't find his name in that platform. Wow. And that should be enough for wow. you to make a decision. Well, and, and again, going back to, you know, we just, we, we've come through the, the whole political cycle. We're now on the tail end of, of things here with the race, both nationally and our race. Um, we, so we just came through the, the conventions, um, and I think there was a stark contrast between the two. Uh, oh, there wasn't God in, in the Democratic convention. Uh, they took God out of the pledge, uh, which is just disturbing to me. Um, so again, you need to stay, stay educated on these things. You need to know where the parties stand and what they stand for. And, and, and you know, I'm not here to just push the party. I'm here to push principles that align with my faith and what I think align with the voters of Southeast Arkansas. And, and, and going back to something we stated, I think, early on in this, our faith drives who we are, and it should. Um, I said this the other night in Monticello at a, at a forum. Um, when, I, when I look at what I believe, I make sure that it aligns with the Scripture, and everything that I believe politically ought to align itself with the principles uh, in, in the Bible. So uh, I think that that has to be first and foremost. So, David, thank you for that great question. Uh, again, I think we're going to wrap up. You want to say a few words to close? Well, uh, again, my words to close. Uh, one, I, I, would, I would covet your prayers, not just for myself, but for myself being my opponent. And I would like when you, when you stop and you think about uh, the issues that are important to you, that you research the candidates. If you have a question, call us. Uh, I know my opponent's open, and I'm open. Call and clarify those, those concerns you may have. Check that voting record. And then I just ask that you vote your conscience and be true to what will be the best choice for South Arkansas. And I'll thank you. And I'll respect your decision and your choice. And God bless you all. Thank you, Howard. And, and I'll, I'll close with echoing that. Um, again, do the research. Don't take our word for it. Um, those votes, the records are out there. Um, again, I, I'm going to give everybody my cell phone. It's out there on everything. You can find it. I know yours is as well, Howard. But 501-467-5952. That's my cell phone. Happy to answer. Happy to discuss. Uh, whatever you'd like. Um, and, um, and so, uh, again, at the end of the day, we've put out there what we stand for, what we, what we believe, the issues uh, that we're going to try to be advocates for. Um, and so we're going to continue to do that over the course of the campaign. Win or lose, we're still going to be involved. We're still going to be working right here in southeast Arkansas to promote um, the region, uh, to advocate for the region and for policy uh, that'll help the region continue to move forward and grow. So at the end of the day, yes, pray for us, pray for this election, uh, pray for our leaders uh, on both sides. And again, we just want to say thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, I encourage those who just jumped on the tail end of this, go back and watch it. I, I think we, we pretty much covered everything. We probably rambled a lot. We probably went longer than, than we should have, and for that we apologize. But again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'd be honored to have your vote. It'd be honored to, to represent you. And so again, thank you so much. God bless. Have a great evening.